The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for the ailing uh, Larry Pesavento. I'm sure you'll be well and on his way to great recovery real soon. Just uh, didn't feel so great today. So I said, no problem. I'm right here. I'll do the show, and of course, not the same as Larry, but we will do the very best we can in trade what you see. Um, so my name is Basil Chapman. I uh, have a service on TFN. It's called the Opening Call. It's a very comprehensive look at the markets. I look at anything that moves, as long as it's got oscillation with price moving up and down, I can do the charts. I don't need to have uh, anything else but the price movement and uh, to do certain chart patterns. But I also prefer to include certain things like the stochastic, slow stochastic, and the MACD, and nine-period moving averages, etc. Now, I know Larry doesn't do it, so I'll be talking about certain techniques that might be a little foreign to you, but the principle involved will pretty much be the same of looking at higher lows and lower highs. So this is what we're looking at right now. The E mini, the S and P is down six. The S and P itself is down six ninety one. The Dow is down thirty four. Uh, I'm going to show a number of uh, chart patterns right now. At this point, if you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll be looking at the um, the E mini. This is the ten minute chart, and I like to look at ten minute charts as a as a way of leading into the longer term to to the to the uh, to the 120 minute chart really and in this particular instance you'll see that from last night let me squash this a little bit you'll see that there was a peak f now what i do in my my particular technique i go from the lowest most identifiable low bar in this case it was the low of on the 27th of April at 1386.50 and I merely count each successively higher peak. Now in the less than 10 minute charts I use a one technique but in everything else from the 10 minute up I always use another technique and I merely look at each successively higher peak. In this case it went to peak A, B, C, D is usually where you expect some kind of a pullback. I wrote a song oh, many many years ago it's called buy at the low sell at the high and it explains the Chapman Wave methodology in in, in just in easy detail, and what it says is using the stoke the stochastic and the MACD as you can see here look how it ran up before the price movement that can be a clue and it says the Chapman wave is what you need you buy with the stoke and the old MACD this is the MACD the moving average convergence divergence the wave goes to A and then to B even the anticipated C and D there's no singing today this is not going to be the singing show that's when it flashes a cautionary light, but all you got to do is make your stops real tight. Suddenly it goes to E and F, a bell rings so loud it can make you deaf. Why? Look at this. Look at the way, right at that particular point that on the 27th at 9.10, the high of 14.03, look where the, the MACD was making this M-shaped pattern. It's not a good pattern. Uh, if 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 the fast moving average, that yellow moving average, breaks the low, uh, the the red line, which is the slow moving average, and look where the stochastic was. Instead of being way up at 95 percent, it was way down here at about 73 percent. Good sign to say there's a pattern that's called the lowercase h. Looks like an h breakdown. That's exactly what happened. It broke down and it plunged to the 1393 level. Was it? Yeah, 1393 at about 1010 on the 27th. Um, 10 past 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and then it ran back and retested. It retested just slightly higher at 1402.75, 25 cents lower than the 1403 high. And then look what happened. It went to a peak D. Again, that's that's that, a double top. And look where the technicals were at the double top. They were failing miserably. Kaboom! It goes down, and then it goes sideways. I call it the rectangle formation. That can go on for a long time, which it did. Until this morning at about 9 o'clock, it started to break down. 8.30, it started to break down. It went below. It went to trough C, a brand new buy mode, a sell mode. Trough D starts again, trough C, trough D, and now it is not broken under 3091. I had said to subscribers this morning, my opening course, my daily service, because I always show the E-mini, 120-minute chart or the 10-minute and the 120-minute chart, and I do a synopsis. I don't say buy or sell. I say these are the things we're looking at. So that's exactly what we're looking at. Um, 
And what I said is, if it breaks the 3093, 3091 low, be careful. And if it does it before, oh, I can't remember exactly what time I said. If it does it before a certain time, be careful because that would indicate that it's going to be weakness most of the day. If by 10, 20, I think I said, or maybe noon, I can't remember. But by mm, in the morning session, if it's able to break above 3096 to 3097, that's very positive. And this is that you're probably going to close higher. So those are the two parameters to watch. Well, let's go to the 120 minute chart. And that 120 minute chart sh shows what? A peak effort 14. 03 on the, in the E-mini futures, S&P June futures. And now you're starting to test the low of the, the rectangle formation. It says there's a real good chance that if you close towards the low overnight session, you will go towards the 1386 low of at 4.30 on the 27th. That's the way I look at it. If by the end of the day we suddenly have a burst of strength, end of the month buying or whatever it is, it says the level to watch is 13.97 to 13.99. Good. We've done that. Now let's go through the numbers. I always do the numbers when I do my Tiger Technicians Hour. That's my show that I do uh, every day, at, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 o'clock till noon. The Dow is down 34, 13,194. The S&P is down 677 at 1396. The Comp Index is down um, 18 at 3,051. 3, but now this is interesting. You've got gold down just about $4 at 1661, and silver's down 61 at 30.73. Then you've got high grade copper up 75 cents at 382.75. Crude oil is down 66, and you've got bonds only up 430 seconds. Let's do this because I know that Larry, Larry, trade what you see Thursdays, he's showed you the commodities, but I, I'd like very much to do a couple of things here. First of all, I want to just quickly, I had a call in my last, in my show just a short while ago, Joyce, who wanted to look at Shuffle Master, which was trading at $17.82. Uh, Joyce, yeah, I, I just want to say I stand, I, everything I said is exactly what I would, I would implement as the short as the short term trading position but most importantly i had a chance to just glance at the 120 minute chart we saw another a b c the, the 120 minute chart is holding really well if if by 220 this afternoon shuffle masters trading anywhere near 1794 that's the action that you really want to see so far it's actually holding quite well so i wanted to complete that now i had said that i would go through a number of things for uh, folks in the den earlier on who asked me so i'm going to go through the natural gas ngm natural gas is trading right now at this is the june contract it's trading at two dollars two two dollars and 24 cents, 247, so up 0.061. What's really important about this chart is that in the 120 minute chart from the low that it made at 1.982 on the 20th of April at 4 o'clock, it's gone steadily peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. That was the first buy mode on the 23rd, it concluded at 2.119. At 22, that's 8 o'clock in the evening. Then it pulls back, makes a doji with a low of 2.061, starts a brand new A, peak B, peak C. If you're looking at Tiger 1, you'll be able to see these charts. I'm usually archived in Tiger 11. I'm not sure where this will be, if this will be a substitute for Larry's show on his, uh, on his archive TV. So it goes to a peak E. And that peak here, 2.295 on the 26th at noon, that's really important. Why? Because it pulls down in a very quick trough A, trough B on the way down. I call them troughs. And little V-shaped bottoms. And it goes to trough C and then starts a brand new buy mode. This buy mode is in leg C, peak C right now in the 120-minute chart. I want to see the stochastic get at 72%. I want to see it get above 80% and the MACD continue rallying. I love this chart. I think this chart says it's going to fill the wick. Maybe not all of it, but at least try to fill the wick, which can go to 2.295. Is it 2.25 right now? I suspect we get leg D above 2.26, goes to maybe 2.269, 2.2730-ish. And that's going to be the real test. If it can close there, that's going to be very positive. Why? Because you've got an inverted Roman candle on the... Uh, in the daily chart on the 26th. What is an inverted Roman candle? That's the Chapman Wave technique that I developed that, that 
after a lot of studying of these chart patterns, when you get this wick and it's upside down, when you start to fill more than half of it, you're pretty much going to try to test the top. On the way down, it's the exact opposite. Um, we try to test the bottom. And in, UNG has been... In a, oops, U and G has been in this unbelievable. What, what an example of the nine period exponential moving average. Isn't that funny? I was going to buy the U and G. I just don't trust it because it is such a. It has been. Uh, look at this monthly chart. The monthly chart had it. This is with a split. It was once 127.76. Then it was split at 63.89. What's the high? 511. Point twelve was the high once upon a time, July of two thousand eight. Well it traded right down to fourteen twenty oh, it's just been split. Four ninety eight was the low, uh which meant that it went down to fourteen twenty five was this month's low. Underneath that nine period moving average, it's just it's just uh, hair raisingly horrible. But there's this whole action that I was talking about in the natural gas contract. We're seeing it in UNG. UNG looks to me like it's going to start leg C up in the 16.44 area or higher. That's going to be very important. It'll be the first move in the monthly chart to be able to close above the nine period moving average by this Friday. And that moving average is at, and so it's been covered, so I'm saying 17.19. And right now it's at 16.30. That'll be the first decent move in, in, in natural gas. And I do like it. I looked at some of the natural gas stocks. I almost added it in my opening call, and I, I decided to go for something else. But I, it's on my list. Believe me, it's on my list. So I like this very much. But being the first move in the day to actually break into the 50-period uh, exponential moving average, this white line, that says to me, great. There's a chance it could try to get to the 50-period moving average at... 17.50, but I'm going to watch it closely because if it makes a peak C, then you should get a leg D to make a peak D. But the stochastic's only at 57%, and that worries me. It worries me in the sense that I would like it to be leading, but it is moving with the price, and the price is moving with the technicals. It's just that I do like to see the stochastic way higher, but after such a terrible move, never getting above 40%, 35% even, not for ages, this is really good. I like, I like natural gas right now, NGM, so NGM I think is going to go higher, and the actual price of the NGM, if it breaks, 2.295, that's leg C, uh, sorry, that's leg B, it's a little more ahead in the UNG. In that horrible contract, what is UNG again? That is the, what is the title? It's called the United States National Gas Fund. And it had a lot of gas for a long time, letting it all out. But right now, that's looking quite good. So I'm going to be back and we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at the dollar, the euro. And then we're going to look at some stocks because this is Trade What You See, Larry Pesavento Show, 877-927-6648. Oh, I'd love to take your calls. 877-927-6648. And international calls would be great. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end, as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everybody. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. As I said, my service is the opening call. Very comprehensive. Look at the markets and uh, different stocks, etc. that we have every day. My opening call. And I look at the indexes and the ETFs and give the parameters that we're looking for. Plus, techniques like using the trend, using the, the short-term trading index, using the volatility index, etc. I've been saying for a long time that it's not about anything else but the buying pressure of the volatility index, the VIX. If it stays... I originally said under 30, then I said it has to be under 28s and hold there, closing. Then I said once it's in the teens, it's got to be in the teens under 18. Now it's in the 16s. So this is really a very interesting period because it's buying pressure based on at least my reading of the volatility index. When you go to high-grade copper, high-grade copper right now is at 3.8255. It's in leg C up in, um, in a short-term buy mode. But what's most important is in the weekly chart, <clears throat> there's a pattern that I call the expanding, it's really an expanding um, wedge. And I call it the falling axe pattern, but basically what it is, it's just it's like a flag pattern. When you break out of it, not you, when the price breaks out of it, 
there's a good and holds and takes out the left side high bar. That's really what you aim for in this case, 3.99 the week of the 10th of February. There can be a one to one expansion to the upside. And that'll take you to a strong leg C and it'll go right into the whole cluster area of September of last year into the four, the low 4.1, 4.2 area. That's going to be very important. But holding as it is right now, when I go to my HG.P, when I go to the continuous contract, it's not actually quite as positive. The continuous contract is just a little different than the <clears throat> than the actual contract itself, but it's the same principle. If it can close, if if high grade copper by Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, perhaps Wednesday afternoon, can close into the three. 0.864 area, it's right now 3.82, that's going to be really good. If it closes above 3.9985 in May, it started leg C up, that is a positive for the market. Contrary to that, if it suddenly fails and it breaks the 200 period moving average support of 3.54, be careful, the markets and high grade copper are going to go much lower. Right now, it's still positive, it's leg a, B, it's leg C up, new high to recovery high today, so leg C up in the daily chart. Now, I'd been asked about the dollar, the dollar, DXY, there we go. This is the dollar index. I've spoken about this as being a, a very good chance that the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily at 78.58 will be the target that I have, and it should be hit. Well, it went down today in the index to 78.64, that's eight cents higher. And it is not uh, managed to um, it is not managed to break below it yet. So now, to me, that is very important. And and in looking at this, what I'm seeing is that the low of seventy eight sixty six of the week of the eight of uh, no of April the third. That's going to be key because we've made a lower low today. Now there's a chart pattern that I've been talking about in my show my Tiger Technicians Hour just um, an hour ago, less than an hour ago. And what the pattern I was talking about was an H pattern. It looks like what's what I, we, I, I've i always termed the dreaded H. It looks like a lowercase H. Basically, as you come straight down, and in this case, you come down from the 15th uh, of March, 80.74, to the most recent low of 3rd of April at 78.66, ran up, peak A, peak B minus. Look how many peak B minuses there are. That's not a good sign in my work. The so peak B minus, well, it's peak B. It's now peak B minus because you've gone to a lower low. That automatically gets changed, so I have to change that. It's a failure pattern, peak B minus. Now look at this. The stochastic is just trying to turn around at 5.3%. That is really negative. It's, it's a, that, is a, that is, look, when it last did that in late March, early February, it just stayed there for a while. So this is going to be very important that the stochastic bounces sharply up to about the 9 or 12% area with the price going above 79.09, the 9 period moving average resistance. The MACD is still negative, but it's sort of flattening out. So that says to me, I've got to look at the euro, the EURUSD currency pair. And in this particular instance, we've gone to a peak C. It's a counter trend rally, so it could fail at any point, but the MACD is, is, is holding well. It's the stochastic that's holding at 88%. That is good, as long as it holds. You see, every time it failed, the price went down, it broke down. This is the first time that it looks like it's only flattening out. That says that the euro has a good chance, it doesn't have to be today, but to get above 1.3 to 696. Basil Chaplin, and we're going to go straight to, and when we get back, we'll go to Ari and Arcadia. Ari, you want to look at? The GLD weekly, Basil. All right, I'll be right back with Ari looking at the GLD. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations 
options, including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Uh, we being uh, Basil Chapman and uh, Ari from Arcadia, and we are going to be looking at the GLD. Correct, Ari? Okay, so this is actually this is very important. The GLD, as far as I'm concerned, that weekly chart sitting, you can see in my chart, if you're looking at Tiger TV or if you're in the den, that two-year up channel, which was broken uh, back on the week of the 5th of August of last year when it went to 163.87, went to peak C, then peak D at 185.85, and then plunged down to 154.19, made that H pattern. This is what I've been talking about all day, these H patterns. We're going to see a lot of them over the coming weeks. And then this H pattern said, I'm going to pull back and close underneath the 154.19 level, which it did, went to 148.27, but... It held that up channel beautifully, but now look what's happening. The nine, now I'm going to expand this so that you can see. I'm going to make this nice and big. I'm looking at Tiger TV so that I can see that we're all looking at the same thing. Can you see how it's working its way, trying to climb the, the, 
that green line that's called the inside track in the, in the Chapman Wave. It's, it's what I call the inside track buy mode. It's where every time it gets to this level in previous on previous occasions, it's bounced. But look what's happening. It's barely bounced. And that nine period moving average, that white line has been the repellent line. And if you look at the, and this to me is a big clue, if you look at the stochastic the daily the weekly stochastic it's flattening out yes it's crossed over but there's no big v shape to it and the macd is only flattening out it hasn't crossed positive it's not even it's barely rising in fact it's flat I, the way I'm looking, one of the reasons why I was a little reluctant, even though I saw that there was a potential for a bounce in the gold stocks, is because I, I suspect, especially when you consider that the dollar's just been terrible, why hasn't gold, why isn't the GCM, the gold contract, powered higher? I'm not talking about this little counter trend rally. I mean, if go, if the dollar pulls back so sharply, you would anticipate that the the uh, the the counterpoint, as you get in Bach uh, Bach pieces, when the one melody is going one way and the other is going the other way, and when they come together, they're still in counterpoint because one's coming down, one's going up. It's the same thing here that we would normally see, and I I, don't, I can't pick up the chart right now, but we would normally see a kind of a counterpoint move, and instead there's been nothing, and that peak F that I've got as a major top, uh, it's a, a continuous. Uh, no, that's right. At 1928.30. Back in September of 2011, that continues to be, for me, a, 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 a peak of importance because the stochastic was fading way before that, and now the MACD is confirming it. So, yeah, this is what I'm looking at. Not only that, if you use volume, you'll see that there's volume to the down candle, even though it's just a small candle this month, the month of April, and we're closing in a couple of hours for gold. So I like, on a very short-term the chance of it bouncing, but I suspect that even if the, if gold was to bounce, it's at nineteen, it's at sixteen sixty four right now. The high bar of sixteen eighty one back on the thirteenth, the week of the thirteenth of April, that'll be tough. That'll be tough to break um, in the daily chart. If it does it now, that'll be actually. Let me tell you something. What would be very bullish if you were looking at gold stocks to trade or the GLD, you want to see by tomorrow a decisive close over Friday's high in the GCM, the the, the June contract above 1668. Really, you want to see 1672.73. If it does that in leg C, if that leg C continues above 1681.30, the high of the 12th. That's an overlapping wave in the Chapman wave, and that's very powerful. That should take you to leg D, and that will challenge the candle of 1699.60 of the 27th of March. So that's the bullish scenario. The bearish scenario is that this rally fizzles. It cannot get above 1679.20, the high of the 13th, or, of course, the one before 1681. So it cannot break into that area the whole week. That will be bearish. So you're, are you still short the GLD? Yes, I am. Okay. So in the GLD, which is the Spider Gold Trust, which trades at one-tenth the price of gold, is trading at 161.58, up 20 cents, I can give you a case to say that the, the H pattern, which became an M and never broke underneath the 156.58 low of the April the 14th, is a sign that says it could test, yeah, we get the candle, we could test the candle of 163.20, the high of the 12th of April. Why? Because in the pattern that I talk about in my dreaded H pattern, and let me go back to that, dreaded H is right, is that chapter what? Uh, dreaded H, chapter 17, it says that, here we go, oops, Chapter 17. Oh, I just did something wrong. All right, made a mistake. It says that, here we go. Click, click. It says that the M pattern can continue twice. So you make an H, it goes to an M. If in the second pattern it breaks below the left side, most important low bar, it could rally, and that rally should take you to the top of the of the previous arch high. So what we've got here is something a little different. It's the same principle, but it's made 
It made a little M. I'm going to put this one in so that you can see it. There's that little M. And it made the larger one, and that one went below but closed above, the left side low, in the GLD of that doji candle of 158.80 on the 14th of March. So that says it can rally, but it probably won't go above the previous high unless the technicals are really strong. Well, they were, and it went all the way to 164.89. The rule says that you should still come back and retest. It did the retest made a little arch, and then it went underneath and closed. So you can see that it's made these patterns, but now the cup formation is a little bit stronger. So here is what I'm going to recommend to you. If you're, in, you're short from around about 169 or higher? Higher. Higher. So then this is, I, I personally would not change that position at all. But on a very small trading position, I would say to you, if you want to take a little bit off right now, I suspect you're going to have a good opportunity to put it back on. And you'd put it on at between 162.90 to 163.40, somewhere around there. And that one would have a stop of about a point but it's on a short-term basis so two things can happen you can either take something off right now just a little bit and you're going to be putting it back because this rebound could go just a little high if you look at the euro and they have kind of they have traded pretty much not together but in direction they've done pretty much the same thing so the euro is looking like it wants to make a leg d up so all i'm saying to you is you don't have to do it right now just consider over the period of the day that there's a chance that this bounce in gold could go a little bit further i do call it a bounce you might want to take something off a little bit now and then you want to put it back a little later or maybe by wednesday we can talk again and see where you would put it back if it actually worked out or you could just make do it make it real easy for yourself and say on a very small position i'm going to make a stop one penny above friday's high and that would be 161.98 and at 161.98 you take something off and that's what you're going to put back again what you want to see is by the end of the day a failure my suspicion is if there's a failure in gold you're going to see a failure in the market the dow will be down 65 s&p will be down about nine or 850 but so far all buying has been met with selling, and all selling has been met with buying. We're sort of in a trading range for the stock market. I hope that helps you, Ari. Thank you very much. But remember, I'm looking at that weekly chart, and that weekly chart says the way it's acting here is very, it's not, it's weekly, the W-E-A-K for the weekly chart, and I suspect that you will at some point in May be breaking uh, 154 support, and once 154 support support goes, you'll be retesting the 148s in gold. That's the way it's looking at this particular time, but we'll go one step at a time. Thank, Thank you. you so much for calling. Thank you. Thank you. That's Arian Arcadia. We were looking at the GLD. We were looking at gold. I'm also going to include something now. Um, it's the USD JP. PY and then USD JPY says that it may there's that pattern that I keep talking about the arch formation that doesn't go to more than a peak A or a B and then it fails look what happened peak A minus this is the dollar Japanese yen currency pair testing what the nine the 200 period exponential moving average exactly the low today is 79732 what does it say it says the weekly chart is fading and unless it's able to close above 80.93 on Friday, it's going to close again under the nine-period exponential moving average. The monthly chart is just starting to improve a little bit. A lot depends on what happens in May because that could be a peak, a single leg A up failure pattern. Oh, wait, no, that's B. Uh, a. No, that's a single leg A up. So we were watching that um Closely. So now, uh, what we're going to do is let's look at the E-mini. I know uh, Larry, uh, of course, does futures, and he trades the futures, so let's look at the futures. The E-mini contract, the March contract daily, has just made 14.03 was the high on the 27th. Today's high is 14.02.50, 50 cents difference. If we do not make a new high, we've made a peak E, a peak D in the 
in the daily chart, but the stochastic's at 83%. That is still very good, and the MACD is turning up. So what would we be looking at for a failure? There's also the pattern that I call the the falling axe. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm just probably going to have to one day change the name of it. It's a declining cone. A declining expanding cone. Well, a cone, of course, expands. So it's a declining cone. From the 1419.75 high, peak F high in the Chapman Wave on the 27th of March, went all the way down to 1352.50 on the 10th of April. Now it's running peak A, peak B, peak C, and then peak D. Probably today, if there's no new high. Days young, anything can happen. I like that action so far, and it says that in this particular pattern of the falling axe, you could get, oh, I don't even want to talk about this, it sounds outrageous. You could get a one-to-one -one upside move. And for those of you who know, who've done my Master Trader series, you know how I do these things. I do a parallel arch, and I always take it from the, the most important lowest low. And that says it could go to 1309, which it did. Now it can go to the next level, and that next level will be right there. And that says you could break to new highs above 1419.75 only if certain conditions are met. That means that the weekly chart is what we've got to look at. The condition there is you've made a peak C. Of course, we expect a peak D. That's part of the Chapman wave. I've got that same falling X pattern right there. That, that, that wedge that you want to break out of. If the E-minis by Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, are trading anywhere in the 1409 area, 1407 to 1409 area, then there's a good chance it's going to test the 1419.75 area some point during this week or maybe early next week, as long as it doesn't break and close below, I'll tell you right now. 1371 to 1369. To me, that, that probably is going to be, that's going to be very important uh, this week. So, and, and then if you go to, I have to go to the SPX, the cash, because I have much more data for the monthly chart. The monthly chart says this is leg E. And there's that pattern that I was talking about, that falling axe pattern. Looks just like there's the blade goes up, and then you got the, I mean, there's the handle, there's the blade. That says there's a one-to-one, -one, and we've already done a one-to-one -one expansion of that particular pattern. Look, there it is. One, two, there it goes. One, two, one. From that bar there. Whoops, from that bar there. So what we've done is we've made an expansion and that in the monthly chart is very good. Of course where we close today is important but on the daily chart, the monthly chart so far, boy we'd have to turn around and close 150 points down to really negate every all the good action in the, in the monthly chart so far. So, so far this is not a bad, bad uh, situation. Let's now go to Apple. Apple is really uh, important in that there are a couple of things going on. It isn't just about Apple in the queues, but it certainly is a really big waiting. And that waiting says, we've got to look at the chart patterns, because consistency is what this is all about. If you make, I always look at round numbers, you made a 644 round number at peak E in Apple on the 10th of April. Then you plunge down and fill the gap completely. You went right under it, the gap from March the... March the 13th, 568, 18 high, and the next day, 575, 40 was the low. That's the gap that was filled. You did a left side, right side price time match here. I don't know if I can get into that here. This is another technique that I've developed where you can identify a midpoint and you can draw a channel line. Uh, so not a channel line, a horizontal line. And that horizontal line says it goes up and then it should come down in an equal amount of time, which it did. Actually, two bars earlier it broke below that support. I'll talk about this when we get back. 877-927-663. This is Larry's show. I'd love to I'd love to talk with you. We could even do some uh um the garden if you want. I'll be back. 
At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. But you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off or something? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we waited at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Dow's down 28. SB's down 5.5. Now, this is important. I was asked about the DAX. Now, I don't have the DAX. I don't know why I, I haven't been able to get it. I, I must call up uh, Trade Session and see what, the, what they put in for the symbol D. I, I, but I do, get, I do get something else, which is the... Um, let me just check one more time, the X dot X. No, I don't. But I do get the the dollar, uh, sorry, the Dow, what do they call it? They call it the, the Dow DJ Germany Stock Index, which is a different, it's the same chart pattern. I just looked at the EWG, which is the ETF uh, iShares. I looked at the, uh, um, and, and the 
and this this should be very close. So it says it's made a peak C in the weekly, and that like like the Dow, which has only made a peak C, should make a leg D at some point. The monthly is still acting very well and it's closing well above the nine period exponential moving average. Now this sharp move down today is a little bit of a concern, but that's because there was very negative news out of Europe before we opened. And in fact, we opened down and then we came back up and then came down. So that impacted us, but end of the month buying is part of what we've got now. Now there is a chart pattern that says if the stochastic which is at 70.87 is able to rise because leg B has started above 257.71 that would equate to Friday's high if you're looking at the DAX index um, and the DAX of course is trading now and let me just double check here I think it's 6,000 I'll tell you right now the DAX is at 6,761 down 40 and then they've closed uh, for the day. So what we're looking at here is the chance because we've gone above 257.67. Yeah, we've bro bro broken. In, this is like a doji candle when you look at it as one four five bar as a weekly candle. Yeah, there you are as a weekly candle. Last week we enveloped the low bar of the previous week hit the 200 period moving average, and we went above. So this is going to be very important. If by Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, the DAX index is at uh, so 6,761, is above the high of Friday, that's going to be very important. If, in fact, it breaks down and goes under the low of Friday, not good. That's that H pattern that could be unfolding. So I, I hope I answered that question somewhat. Um, now let's do there's something else. The... Um, when, what I want you to look at is in the, uh, let's see, the futures, I wrote it down, don't forget. Oh, that's right. The Let's just do these. I saw these go by, and I just did the charts quickly. You know, I didn't, some of them were already done. Oh, I just did something wrong. There it is. Got LHM12. This is lean hogs. Hogs look terrible they are coming down sharply there's the dreaded h pattern that broke down completely from a peak e top uh, e on the 20 week of the 25th of november it is plunging i'm not sure if i've got any history i wonder if i can do a dot lh and see where there would be support for hogs yeah look at this support for hogs in the weekly chart on the monthly chart says oh, it could retest the lows of 78.775 it's at 85.80. Why? Well, first of all, if it closes the week underneath 86, 86.50, that's not a good sign because it says that it's making that M pattern, two M patterns. So that, that's not good. So hogs are going down. Let's do the next one, which is uh, LBN. LBN. Not LBJ, but LBN. Now we got LBN. This is very interesting. This is the random length lumber. I don't know if anybody trades it, but I found it recently and I like it. Um, this is making a soft W formation. And that soft W formation actually looks like the it looks like the heart. Look at that. Oh, is that the liver? <laughs> so this says if L LBN, which is a 286.20, can close above the high of the 2nd of March, 295.70. It's going to 301. That is the 200-period um, exponential moving average. I'll be back straight after this.